We're ready to rock and roll, man. And we're live. We are live. All right, so let me make sure everything's cool on this end. Turn that up a little bit. Wait, it's not actually going to... Ah, there we go. Okay. All right, so we'll just kind of... I'll replace my... Wet palette here as we wait for the shambling masses to start arriving. Get that sweet water cam action there. we're live on this end. Oh, come on, man. I'm getting the Twitch ad. When you just want to check on your own stream, but you have to watch the ad. All right, so we're going to move this over here, give you guys a little real estate on the palette. There we go. All right, so today uh, I definitely want to delve into rendering out the rest of our rock. It's actually amazing everywhere we put the purple, all that stuff. I think I'm going to go with some blue today. There we go, we're live, all right, cool. Um, I definitely want to go with some blue today though because I feel like uh, we just didn't get some of the color shifts that I was hoping for, so not too big of a deal. I'm using this twilight color. It's more of a grayed out shadowy purpley blue. Hey everybody. Hey Jedi. Hey Andre. <laughs> There's that 3 p.m. alarm. Sleep. Alright. Now then. We're gonna start doing some shadow work here. Some purposeful shadow work. So we're gonna flip this guy upside down. I don't know if you guys saw the sort of announcement post. I mean, I know that a lot of you follow me on Facebook or are at least in the Reaper group. There we go. That's that's good build in there. Um, I did sort of preview the miniatures that I'm considering uh, for whatever our Wavy Wednesday uh, show is going to end up being. So if you guys saw that post, I can show those off on camera as well so you can get a better idea. Um, but, I mean, it's really fun. Those are all super converted uh, metal miniatures. Um, all of them are Reaper, as to be expected, of course, but um, a lot of really, really good work went into them, so that's exciting. Who's messaging me? Rex Grange! What's up, Rex? You guys may know Rex from uh, ReaperCon. He was messaging me today that he probably won't be able to make it this year. His job stuff has changed a bit since last year, so he will be missed. He was my buddy, man. He was, he was the barbecue bud. We would go get barbecue. But I feel like if I need a barbecue buddy, I'm sure Justin will be my barbecue buddy this year. So I love me some barbecue. There he is. All right, Steve. Got barbecue buddy confirmed. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for areas where I can section out some of the texture and then increase the shadow. So you can see me doing that here. There 
go. But we are getting down to the final chapters on this dragon. I know it seems like the day would never come. I know I'm very pleased. <laughs> It was funny last night, Sydney was like, how happy are you going to be when you're done with that dragon? I'm like, oh my god, you have no idea. I have like a very personal issue with uh, not enjoying working on the same thing more than once. <laughs> so you can imagine how this has been a bit of a, a personal, personal battle working on this in so many sessions. But, you know, it's one of those things too where, as we've discussed, I was purposefully using techniques that just require that much time, right? Like that usually... You know, the issues I have with, with wanting to work, and this is, you know, when I was in art school, I had the same issue. Like, I like to be a, a one and done uh, uh, type of guy. Um, you know, when I, when I work on things uh, like personal art, whatever, I like uh, working with inks. And um, like, for, for example, hopefully this makes sense, I like the permanency of decisions. So, uh, you know, if I'm doing a drawing, I don't start a drawing with a, a pencil, right? I start it with a pen or a sharpie or whatever and like whatever happens happens with it um and that way i just keep things loose and fast and whatever so very similar to the way that i do this painting right like i like techniques like the the super thin layering all that stuff because it allows me to work so much faster that i i can get more done in one sitting and so you know doing the techniques we've done on this guy you, you can't you don't really have that luxury so that's kind of been the, been the difference with this paint job but very rarely do I get to do, you know, really only um, competition paint jobs and stuff are ones that I work on in, in so many repeat sessions, so. Let's see, we got a crack there, so we're gonna get a dark above it. Push it up here, across here. Definitely pleased though, hopefully you can tell the color that we're baking in. And then of course too, I can glaze on top of all of this, right? So I can lessen the intensity, which um, is probably something I'm gonna end up doing anyway, so. Now what I'm gonna do actually, we, we should get a different color involved here. So let's see, what do we wanna, what do we wanna work with here? I'm thinking I need something kind of gross. So I'm gonna use, oh wow, Arthur is sneaking up behind me here. Careful now, ladies. There we go. Arthur, you can't sit there, buddy. Arthur, what are you doing, bud? You guys can't see him. He's literally right next to me on my... He's about to be on my keyboard, is what really is happening. All right, so I'm gonna mix this cav color. You can see it's a really nice yellowy ochre, and it's gonna get mixed in with our purple. So it's gonna get real gross, which is what I'm looking for here. To be an alternate shade color. There we go. We'll layer this in in some of these. Just to break up what we're sort of seeing and what we're used to. There we are. So just glazing a color in all over in different capacities, of course. Hope you guys are all having a good day out there. I can see more people hopping in now. So I'm assuming the notifications did or did not roll out. There also just aren't as many people on Twitch today for whatever reason. Hey, Sharky, hope you're doing good. Keep building this color in over here. Not this much though, we're gonna move it around. There we go. Just water. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Put 
some in right here. And I'm gonna grab some of the darker color, cap it off next to it. You know, anywhere I'm placing this yellow color, I want it to be resting next to the deep twilight that we're applying. So that's why I'm kind of just mixing and matching each side. You can see how it's drying here. It's obviously way less intense than, when, than how it's applied, but that's kind of the trick with all these, right? You just kind of have to guess what the end result with your consistency will actually look like. Because sometimes you don't know until you get there. And that's just the name of the game. So the name of the game is, I don't know what this is gonna look like and I hope it looks okay. Coming to Kickstarter this fall. There we go. Layering in some more of our deep twilight. So don't forget Musty Justy. Yes, he's here. He's uh, doing some work in the background. He's always listening. This is his. I, I never go away. He never goes away. Yeah, during my stream is his chance to uh, catch up on work and stuff. So in case I just need him for banter, he is available at all times. He is the ban banter boss. Boss banter Justin. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Actually, I'll uh, I'll take the uh, chance here to say hi to everyone. If if you didn't know, I was already here. And how are you guys today? Thank you for joining us for the end stream this morning as well. If you were also there, and thank you for tuning in today. Since it looks like Josh had already commented earlier, Twitch is kind of down on like the art numbers. It's there's also a weird thing at number one still, where it's just a toilet camera. I know that sounds weird. No one's using the toilet. It's just a camera on a toilet. Sounds like Twitch. Twitch is like, we're a very serious platform. We're gonna we're gonna have an IPO. We're gonna be the most invested thing of all time, da 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 da. And they're like, look at the wonderful content we do. And then it's just a, a camera on a toilet, so. What? What's funny is everyone in the chat is going, oh, this is just modern art. Yeah, this is modern art. It's fantastic. And shade this down a little bit more over here. You know, that's probably right too, Sharky. Is Valorant has come out with this absolute crazy story. I had thought about, because I have beta access, I had thought about actually streaming Valorant uh, from the Reaper channel what with is Reaper John. It's the new uh, Riot first person shooter that's in closed beta right now. Oh. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's it's uh I, I had thought about streaming it just because then you know it's it's not to jump on the hype train but to jump on the hype train, right? I mean it brings people to our channel to go, Hey, you may like this, but we paint minis guys. And they're like, You do what? They're like nerd, exactly. you're like you're already watching somebody play games. Chill out. Sydney's been watching people play Animal Crossing on Twitch. Oh yeah? That's a whole new lane. Um, that's kinda I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, that's that's kinda I mean it's really kind of a relaxed game to begin with, but to watch it too, that's that's like doubly relaxing. Yeah. Yeah, she had a she has a switch light and I still at some point would like to get one. I just feel like it's a really nice um little device yeah I still have my switch from when the switch originally came out when no one could get a hold of one mm -hmm. I, I got really lucky at a GameStop and some some guy had basically just come in to say he didn't want to sell his or didn't want to buy his anymore so it went available and I was like the first person behind I was like uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and snatch that up 
And then I had considered, it stayed like unopened for like a month, and I had considered just selling the damn thing, but then I ended up playing Zelda, and uh, I've had it since. Zelda Dork of the Wild. Yeah, that, that was that was a lot of fun. Although I'm glad I didn't sell it, because my fiance has actually played more of that Switch than I ever have. There you go. Although not Animal Crossing. Primarily just, uh, she played Graveyard Keeper and then she played, she's playing through the Spyro games right now. Ah. Yeah, it was funny looking at some of the, um, uh, Bloodstone Gnome Warlord, uh, like, golem miniatures. They look like a lot of the, like, sort of tiki guys from Crash Bandicoot. Um, cause yeah, we, I just finished putting together one of them and it, it literally looks like a video game, like boss. It's so funny. I wonder if they drew any inspiration from that. I'll have to ask I think, Gus or... Yeah, I forget who the one, who the, per, who the sculptor was on them. Um, it's, it's kind of like I didn't realize Kevin did all the dragons for, uh, the Reptus people. So I'm, it's all the same guy cause they all look the same. I don't, I know it's not, uh, Werner cause Werner did, uh, some of like the troops, but the big rock golems. Um, are just so intriguing. So intriguing. All right, so I'm definitely happy with all the different tones that we have built into this. We've got greens, grays, blues, oranges, purples, you name it. I want to introduce a little bit more red, so we're probably going to knock around more of that auburn shadow color. Most likely for sure, but yeah, the texture's great, so. We do need to make a lot of these parts darker. And again, we're going to tint everything with the airbrush at some point at the end, so all of these other transitions that I have coming from below are gonna gonna taper out and fade into everything else. So that will be a big help. Good little finishing move. But you can see I'm just layering in a lot of that purple, so. Okay, so over here, now I really like this structure right here. This looks super rocky. So. <clears throat> is that phthalo green on the palette? There's no phthalo green on the palette, nope. Just a purple and a yellow color. People love that green, don't they? Yep. good one. Hey Frank, how you doing? Assuming that's Frank. I always assume it's Frank. Do I ever varnish to lock in the work? Um, I only ever varnish to uh, get rid of any shine on a miniature. And right now we don't really have any. We've been lucky. I haven't used colors really that are um, reflective at all. So. But yeah, that's I, I will um, in that instance. So, and then in that instance, I use the Vallejo Mecca Air because it's like the best varnish on the market for matte surfaces. Um, but depending on how much you end up applying over multiple coats, um, it creates a porous texture on the miniature. So depending on what type of work you have left to do, um, it can actually uh, make your painting process a nightmare. So. Um, you just kind of like, I've, I've had to learn when and when not to go back in and clear coat things if I know I have to do certain stages. So if I have a lot of the water um, tapering or any kind of detail work like that, I know not to do it because it will, uh, essentially what it does is it makes all the paint bloom. That's kind of the best way that I can describe um, what it does. But it just, so you'll, you'll apply a little bit of paint somewhere and then it just kind of goes 
it just kind of spreads out on its own in the pores that the varnish leaves, so. But, there's your answer. Yes, kinda, sometimes I do, yes. And not all the time, but I do. Now then this side of the rocks, uh, we didn't do as much outlining and everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock out these portions. I'm gonna start relatively low with this sort of greenish ochre color that we are building off with that Adon Sunset, I think it's called. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an idiot, Adon Prairie. It was Adon something. So now I will need to get out some of that brighter, lighter color that we were using previously to highlight up the work. I'm gonna get some of this in here. Just wanna make sure I use up as much of this on the palette before we introduce anything else so that way everything kind of stays cohesive. I'm going directly up underneath there. There we are. All right. Very cool. It's kind of hard to tell, right? But you can see what we're building on. All right, so I'm gonna get that good old Bethalian ch 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 chitin. There we go. Let me know too whenever you guys wanna see the miniatures we're gonna be using for what we believe will be the first sort of long form project for Wavy Wednesdays, I believe. Working title. But I sort of finalized all of them last night in preparation of that. Always trying to stay a few steps ahead. Very excited though. The conversions are pretty sweet. If I do say so myself. Everything, there's so many pins in those miniatures too, like you wouldn't even imagine. Every single weapon I either broke off or replaced. I think every single miniature has a different weapon uh, or a converted weapon except for Pirate Sophie. Um, and all, every single one is pinned like all the way down through the forearm, so none of those are gonna break. Um, I have head swaps, I chopped off heads at the top to make room for hats. I mean, so much work. Like, you have no idea how many metal shavings were all over the place over here from the amount of work I was doing, but um, the end result is pretty subtle. So that's that's kind of exactly what you want whenever you're doing really heavy conversion work, is like, unless it's something like a, you know, unless you're trying to make like a My Little Pony, you know, Space Marine Squad, where it's like, oh, right, like it's something that's completely obvious and, and uh, um, easy to follow, so. But the idea was to make a all-female um, vampire pirate, of course, to go with this year's Rupercon theme, uh, Warlord Army. And I had it at 11 miniatures, but I think now I figured it out, finally it'll be at 10. So I do have one extra pirate uh, miniature that I probably won't end up using. She's kind of like the runt of the litter, so to speak, just kind of boring and plain. I can only change so much about that one, so. But. I only have one more thing to get, and then that army is complete. And for a thousand points, uh, and 10 miniatures, like that's insane, so. By comparison, right, um, I know if you if you guys watched uh, Collins and I play some of the secret Warlord streams back when we were still at HQ, sniff sniff, we miss you. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's always spoken on how, you know, he can make a goblin army at a thousand points that has a hundred miniatures, which is like insane. You know, like Warlord is meant to be a skirmish level game and uh, that's a bit more than a skirmish, so, you know, you can imagine if he has a hundred miniatures and I have ten, that's quite the disparity. But, that being said, you know, 
I, I mean, the amount of chaos and death that happens on his side of the field every single term is much turn is much different than what I would run into. So my vampire gals are uh, quite tough. Quite tough. They ain't knock none of them little goblins. So here I am, yet again, doing some fake texture. Actually, WIP Wednesday doesn't sound half bad. Work in progress Wednesday? Yeah. Ah, Although I mean, that's more like, I don't know, long paint job concentric. I think we wanted to keep it a little more wacky. Like, yeah. we wanted a format where finger painting, a random mini by die roll or whatever, um, was kind of just par for the course. Yeah. So it's kind of like we'll have a, a plan of what we would like to do in terms of a project and then whenever we're bored, right, being able to step in and do something fun or if we're running like, you know, we could do um, one episode a month, like if we're doing, um, it could be like the community episode where we do a challenge and everyone in the chat, you know, dictates like XYZ, weird color, you know, all of that can be uh, a part of some of the stuff that, that you guys engage with, so. I think that's probably a, an easier way to approach it too, right? So it's not so much a paint along, but rather like, all right, now we're moving on to the shirt. What color do you think the shirt should be? Right, we could run polls, we could do whatever. So that of course would be a little bit more work on Justin's side. So that's only if that sounds fun for him, of course. But all those things are ideas that can happen. At the end of the day, I want to do what people want to see the most. So I, I think if it's something that the audience generally wants, then I think I'm on board. Within reason, of course. Yeah, if you start asking for whatever people want, you're going to get nothing done. Pretty much. Yeah, cast, that's not... We're not going to do a switching title of a show every project. I can already say no on that one, <laughs> for sure. The challenge to get a title goes a lot deeper than you even know. <laughs> There's a lot of funny behind the scenes stuff involved there. All right, so I'm happy with what we've layered in so far. Now I'm gonna go get that auburn shadow so we can work that in around, along the base. No, there are no subtitles. <laughs> We're gonna have one name for the show. Or we just won't have a show. That that's simple. Um, it, <laughs> this, this, isn't a, this isn't a group project. So first thing I'm gonna do is get this right along the base edge. So right where that round edge actually hits, I want it to be tinted in this color. So I don't necessarily want it to travel up the rocks, I just want it to exist right at the edge of the base. Of course I say that and my brush slips. But we can always taper it back down using our brush with water, which is what I'm doing now. where I just want this hint of color. Where there's more of the exposed lip. Now you guys can't really see because of the shadow here.
All right, so. Now remember, this color is really, really, I mean, it's still sort of orangey, but it's a much darker brown. You can see where it starts to dry there. As with most of what we're doing, it will desaturate as it dries. Okay, so now it's a question of how far to pull down some of the color. So we're gonna go real thin here. You can see the consistency in the palette. I'm gonna flip the miniature upside down. I'm gonna start pushing. Pushing the paint in the direction I want this glaze to fade. That way we have any buildup of this very small tint of pigment in the correct direction. I don't have to worry about too much beyond that. I'm thinking of my brush as more of like a shovel here. And I'm not like shoving or ruining the bristles, I'm just moving it around. some more there. Dang, I always keep wiping paint on my palette cam. One of these days I'll, I'll actually look at how much paint I've applied to it, but it's probably an insane amount. But I've never hit the lens. I'm always, I'm always expecting to hit the lens on the palette cam, but I, we haven't we haven't gotten that bad yet. Yet, of course, being the key term there. Fully expect to do it at some point. The palette cam will just disappear in a shadow of a blob of accidental paint. So right in, in between here, I feel like we have an opportunity to use a lot more of this color, so I'm going to go ahead and just go for it. spot to do that. Then somewhere on the inside, on this top part, we should probably apply some too. So I'm just gonna kind of pick a place like this. That's where it lives. All right, let's go ahead and tint. That should work for us. Do the same thing over here. Just kind of pick a spot like that. And that's where I will work in the color. so hard to get these angles, man. Wow, that's crazy. But it looks great, so very pleased. Let's check and see where we've been drying. You can tell it's happening there. We're just getting a hint of color. So what I would like to do now is get some black on the edge of the base. And then as that dries, we can kind of check out all those miniatures I was talking about. So I'm just gonna put Steinal Res on it not like real black paint, but I just want to add black. So this is, I used to talk about this more often, depending on what I was working on in my own uh, streams, but I always wait until about halfway through a paint job and then I paint a base black if I have that opportunity. Um, it allows me to see the overall contrast we're working with on a paint job. Um, typically, since I don't paint with black in general, the darkest color that we use is that noir black. Um, I kind of guarantee that result. This is all for visual reference, so I kind of know where we're at in terms of our white balance, the amount of contrast, everything else involved, the amount of saturation in our colors. This is just a good way for me to sort of touch base with the overall palette and 
vibe the miniature is putting off. I usually have my um, Patreon students do the same thing. I, I have them try and assess the amount of black in their paintings about halfway through. And it helps them kind of see, you know, and, and alter their painting uh, behavior in terms of their use of color and everything like that. Just because it helps you sort of look back and go, hmm, I do use too much white, or hmm, I could use more contrast. Hey, Wavy, how you doing? An artist friend of mine, Bjorn Bauer, um, who now actually is an artist in residence in Germany. Um, I used to do shows with him in Oklahoma all the time. He jokingly, always, he, the joke is uh, if I ever came to him for feedback or anything like that or, or advice on a piece, he would always just blanketly say it needs more contrast, even if it's a black and white picture. So, you know, I always think that's good advice for most new painters as well. And one way to make sure you're doing that is by utilizing little tricks like this. So, but I think adding the black rim on the base for sure is gonna help us out. So I'm gonna let this dry for a minute before we go back in and kind of reevaluate everything we've done. Let him live over there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna crank the color down a bit, or sorry, the lighting, there's that. So let's look at all of the stuff that I was converting. I know a lot of you have seen these so far. Well, from this morning. So. Uh, we'll kind of go over these now then I think you guys can see the detail I'm gonna wait until I see it over here. Yeah, you guys can see what's going on. So uh, Here we have Monique Demoir, I believe is her name or Dominique Mino I don't know something like that. She has a 54 millimeter version uh, Which I've got right here So this is the same miniature, or the same character, just one's huge and one's one's uh, regular degular size. Um, this is gonna be was gonna be a Reapercon project as well. I'll probably end up doing it on stream. But so I edited this version. Um, we did a complete weapon swap here. So this weapon, including the the curved um, sort of like finger guard, all that stuff was cut and repositioned, um, and then. Uh, pinned all the way through uh, the, the entire hilt and then halfway up the sword so it's not going to break. Um, the large pistol here was also added, so that's cool. Then the other sort of knight miniature, so these are like death knights that go and correspond with the warlord of the group. So here we have a female vampire miniature, so you can tell there was a huge head swap here, so we have to go back in and sculpt um, the rest of the hair, and then you can see a little bit of green stuff hidden there. So I actually did a pin all the way into the body um, through the top of the helmet and then just smoothed it back down. Uh, we added this, uh, and then this little piece of cloth has to be reconnected as well. We added the shield here. Um, the shield itself is from the, uh, I believe the Necropolis weapon pack, if I remember correctly. Um, and then the pistol here, I swapped uh, it's, this one was actually interesting, so I cut out the hand that was there, and then I replaced it with the hand that was holding a sword, and then chopped that and repinned it, and then attached a gun. So that's actually three, this is three parts of a different miniature, four different parts of four different miniatures there, all, all drilled and pinned together. Um, but the only green stuff work I need to do is re-sculpting the hair. So, but this is also night number two, you can see they kind of have the same vibe. Then the Warlord uh, proxy. Now these are all proxied for you know the Warlord units and everything like that. But so then the leader of the pirate crew, you can see here. This was one of the uh, Reapercon iconics. So I completely twisted and repositioned the arm. The arm was actually pointed down and had a sword um, resting on top of the treasure chest here. So this was completely redone. Um, this is a lance from uh, one of the Death Knight uh, heroes, I believe, from the Necropolis army. Um, this came from one of the weapons packs as well. So since she's sort of a leader of these Death Knights, I figured it would be cool if she used a lance. Like the idea for all these pirates is that they aren't, they're not like a ragtag group of pirates since they're, um, you know, like, rich uh, vampires, right? They, they all should have these like very unique things that they've got going on. But so like these are her bar bodyguards, if that makes sense. So you can kind of see them all together. But so that's kind of the idea, right? 
they're just like heavily armed and armored. And then of course uh, added an eye patch to increase the pirateness and then cut off half of her head and then shaved it down completely and then reattached a new hat on top of that. So um, that's, that's uh, what we did with her. Then the only one I didn't touch at all is Pirate Sophie. She's gonna be the succubus for the army. Um, I did pin the wings, so I need a little bit of green stuff there, but that one's relatively simple. Then we have uh, this other miniature. Only thing that we added was the gun across the back. These are the guns that the um, privateers have for the Razig army. I think they're Razig privateers or they're, I forget the, the word for them. Either way, they've got these guns, so that's cool. Um, really easy there. This one, uh, we've got her cut off the, the hand completely, replaced it with the wider falchion here, or whatever this is, big old, big old sword. She has this tiny little baby pistol, um, which I was pretty iffy about, but the hand is positioned in a way that I can't, if I cut this pistol off and replace it with another one like I did on the other miniature, it's not gonna fit because the grip is so small. I already sort of lined them up um, in my head to see if I can make it work. I even think I have some of the pistols literally like here. Now I could try and do a complete hand swap. You can see I've got uh, a pistol and a hand here. I mean, I could even replace it with the bottle of beer or, or rum or whatever, but we'll see, I'll make that decision. She's pretty, pretty plain Jane normal. Then we've got this pirate uh, right here. Now, I believe she was a half-elf pirate or an elf pirate. We replaced the uh, pirate sword that she had with um, one of these undead weapons from the Necropolis weapon pack. This one, of course, chopped, pinned all the way through the hilt, and then I think the pin goes all the way through the center here. So this isn't breaking off anytime soon either. Let's see. All right, then we have another pirate, of course. They're all pirates, but this one, also, I believe... Also, uh, real quick, thank you, Jacob Jansen, for the tier three for nine months. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jake. Jacob. Um, so we added... We, we chopped off half of her head, completely removed it, um, added another pirate hat on top. You can see there. And then we added the awesome shield uh, from the Necropolis weapon pack as well. So she definitely looks really, really cool. Then let's see, this is the one that I'm not gonna be using anymore, um, just because I'm swapping out uh, one miniature for another. Um, she was just really basic. This is a weapon swap. She had a really tiny sword. I added the, the pistol there. Um, but yeah, this was a part of the, I believe, Necropolis weapon pack. Um, I could be mistaken, but I think these are the weapons that the chattel have, if I remember right. Um, the grunt unit, so chopped that off, pinned it. She's actually double pinned, so she has a pin going this way into the wrist, and then she's got uh, a pin going up into the sword. So it's two pins, one mini. But then probably don't Google that. Then we have um, this Necropolis hero here. She's a female vampire with this big whip doing this cool little move. Um, her weapon was swapped and repinned for this larger blade. Then the last one, now this miniature is probably one of the cooler ones out of the whole bunch. Um, I also just couldn't help myself because there is this pirate uh, Mind Flayer sculpt that Reaper has. So, totally changed everything about this guy. So we chopped off the top part of his head to add, yet again, another pirate hat. Um, repositioned the arm up and sideways so he has a harpoon that he's throwing. Then we replaced the sword that he had originally with this anchor. And then you can see we green stuffed the anchor and attached it to this chain. Um, the chain's actually in two separate segments. So that chain then goes up and it's segmented up underneath his cloak and then that goes up in between the legs there. So this guy is really, really sick. Um, he just counts as either, he's either gonna be a spellcaster or some kind of just big bodyguard guy. Um, but those are all of the miniatures except for, like I said, the one big dark maiden miniature that I wanna do um, for the army. Uh, but that'll be sort of step by step, you know, doing each one. Uh, for the show as we make them look all crazy colorful like every single one is gonna look unique in their own way um, What's gonna unify them in my head at least is going to be the lighting and the colors that we do for that so um, That'll be you know the, the challenge and the enjoyment there of doing crazy colors and everything like that. So um, Yeah, I also don't think I'd shown her off. I'm, I'm excited to work on this sculpt too. This is a uh, one of the larger Reaper 
um, sculpts that they have in metal. I think she's not too expensive too. If you like, if you look at the cost for resin miniatures this size compared to a metal one, it's insane the value that the metal ones actually are. So definitely check that out. I think you can put in 54 millimeter on the on ReaperMini.com and uh, those results will come up for you. Or you can put up, it's either the word limited or special. I forget which, if you search special or limited, um, you'll get all of the extra cool stuff that they make as well that just doesn't pop up all the time that people kind of don't necessarily know about, so. All right, painted the rim of the base black and I like the contrast. It looks really good. I had a loose weapon. So I'm happy with that. I could go a little bit brighter, actually, after seeing the black next to it. Um, but I think with where we're at now, I'm relatively pleased without doing any airbrush tinting. So, let's see. Uh, what is the best way to remove a stock base from a metal mini? Uh, by using a tiny micro saw. Works really well. Um, of course, that depends on the miniature itself. So, like, for all the pirates, right, um, the ones that have integral bases, uh, it didn't really matter as much for me because I'm going to be doing, like, sand on all of them. So, like... On the tab here, you can see I'm, I actually left the tab on top because I want it to uh, compensate for the ones that have the integral base. And then all of that will be covered in sand anyway. Um, I thought about doing a uh, like wooden plank, but that would require me to cut it all off. And I just don't want to saw that many miniatures over and over and over and over. It would just drive me crazy. So um, pr pretty much using a drill, um, 54 and special, there you go. But yeah, me using a drill and using uh, my clippers is pretty much as far as I want to go in terms of cutting because the clippers I'm always afraid something's going to shoot you know all the way across the world and I'll lose it and then with the drill I always almost stab my finger nine times out of ten so but that being said I am going to take some of this black now that we've added black to the base and darken the purple that we've been using for the shadows as we begin to now try and shadow match the darkness on the base rim I'm not gonna go crazy with it. I just want it to be in the darkest areas. You can see I put that whole line of fresh paint. I wiped everything else off the brush except for the moisture and then I feather it like that and that way I can control it, so. Same thing around here. And this is still a relative gla glaive, glaze consistency, so it's not super dark or anything like that. But happy to be done with the base today. I think it looks good, so definitely done a good job. I'm actually gonna go in and uh, add a dark line above all the highlights on the scratches as well to add them de add depth to them. And uh, depth and volume, I guess. So rather than cracks, these will read as like claw marks and scratches. I always think as cracks as much finer and thinner than anything that isn't natural. So that's why I don't really go back and do that. Like all of these are just gonna be striations in the rock, but these I want to be actual, you know, scratches built in. Since I know that's gonna be a focal point area, that's why I'm paying attention to it the most. Checking the backside here, see if there's anywhere for me to 
groove further. All right, we're gonna darken some of this. Darken that whole edge there. Bunch of water tapered between the two. Just like that. There we are. Hey, Jacob. You were gone when everybody was saying hey to you. Came in, everyone was like, Jacob! Congrats uh, to Jacob as well, because he just got his... You said 1,000 follow on Instagram? Isn't that, isn't that what it was? Or was it two things? You hit a thousand on Instagram and something else? I forget which. Speaking of 3D printers, thank you for reminding me, I do still have the Arthur STL files for sale. You can check those out at minipainting.studio in the store. Um, again, whoever it is that bought the file um, and then had a bad email address. Oh, sorry, I gotta brighten this up. There you go. Somebody bought the file, but the email address tied to their PayPal doesn't exist. So I literally can't email you what you purchased. I'm expecting them to send me a message at some point in time, right? But I have no idea who to message because the email doesn't work. And the only email that they gave me was PayPal. So every chance I get, I mean, I'm, I'm like a day away from just making a public post on my page being like, hello, who are you? <laughs> Thanks for the money, but I guess, you know, I'll refund it or something because it's undeliverable. First time I've had that problem though. Very pleased here. Yeah, for people that don't have a 3D printer, you know, the plan, I, I never planned on releasing the 3D files, but I'm just trying to help out Mark and get a little bit of extra cash in the door, um, obviously. But, I mean, at some point down the road, I'm hoping to release uh, the Arthur miniature. It is available in 28 millimeter as well. I had hoped to potentially get it made in metal, but uh, I think the cheaper option, obviously, on my end is just having them printed somewhere, so. So this is all subtle, but I'm just trying to increase the shadow contrast. I mean, I think we're getting there. I think we're getting to that level that makes sense with the base. I just never want to go too far too quick because you, you obviously can't easily step back from that. So. top contrast on these edges. Okay. 
Big thanks to everybody hanging out with us today, though. Uh, we do appreciate it. Drop a one in the chat if you don't have shoes on. Drop a two in the chat if you don't have pants on. Drop a three in the chat if the answer is yes to both. I'm expecting a lot of threes. If we've learned anything in this pandemic, it's pants are workplace only. Now I'm just glazing in some dark striations into the rock as well. Slight marbling effect. And preemptively, no. I don't have a recipe for marble. <laughs> Not something I do. I know there are some people that have marble recipes out there. I just kind of wing it every time and pray that it's a believable thing. I know Kathy Waffle has a cool uh, marble technique, because I've seen her do that before. Even though I feel that sentence, if you just in involve the word um, wobble at all, you know there's going to be cool techniques involved, so... Yeah, that's why I asked the question that way, Cass, because I knew <laughs> I figured the answers would be a lot weirder than we were expecting, so. Well, I gotta be honest, I think we finally did it. I mean, I am, I am very happy with our base. It, it took two sessions, but it was one of those things I didn't know what colors we were gonna use, what direction I wanted to go. Oh, let's go, let's go way darker here in the, in the center before we peace out on everybody. Spots that are up underneath the wing obviously should be super dark or under the body. So I'm just taking black directly and then we're gonna taper it heavily. Where does a onesie fit? You would have to uh, put in a three on that one acid. You're gonna get the, you're in the all of the above section. Justin said he's only wearing pool noodles today, so I don't even know what category that would be. Uh, yes, that's the category. <laughs> uh, pool noodles and a onesie. Pool noodles and a onesie. Well, yeah, you've made a crown out of pool noodles to get a six-foot barrier around people in public, right? Oh, yeah. You know, I saw a picture of that the yeah. other day, and I was like, well, are people actually do it? With as close I think it was as I've people ever... of Walmart. Yeah, I was gonna say, with as close as some Walmart employees have walked by me without masks and gloves, I'm kinda like, that's a great idea, honestly. That, or, like I'd said, the shirt that I wanna make with Sydney that says on the back real big, six feet away or you get pepper spray. I don't want to fake a cough. I don't want somebody to beat me up. I've seen too many of those stories. All right, so that's where I think we're gonna leave this today. I'm gonna to go ahead and zoom way out so we can get a nice table view of the actual base. I think that's killer. Look at the rocks, man. That is exactly what I was looking for. 
a lot of layering, a lot of glazing in. There's so many colors involved in the rock facing. Super, super awesome. Now we can just focus on finishing the tail, the victim, and the details. So probably two more um, sessions on this guy and we can tuck it away. And if not, I'm sick of working on it. So <laughs> either way, at the end of two more, I'm probably just gonna be done with him. Um, I'll finish it up, anything else off camera, take photos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but that'll be it for today. Tomorrow and Friday on my own, I'll be stream streaming more of the box art for Moonstone the Game. Remember, you can check them out at moonstonethegame.com or Moonstone on Facebook. Remember, you can always get in on next week's Miniature Monday as well. If you order today, you should be able to get your kit by next week. You can check that out at Reaper Mini. Just type in Monday and all the result the results Monday or Monday, I think it's Monday, uh, you'll get the kits and they'll pop up for you. Um, the April kit is still uh, in stock and everything as well. And then uh, I'm just gonna keep brainstorming and planning what we are going to do for the Wednesday show. I'm assuming um, next week we're not gonna have, so let me see. Um, Next week, we obviously have Miniature Monday, and then we're not going to have a Tuesday. Is that right, Justin? We're going to start our Correct. Wednesday? Yes. So next week, we'll drop off on Tuesdays, um, and then you'll see me back again on Wednesdays. Uh, I should hopefully have like some cool graphics and stuff, so I'll be pushing out the information on that show um, and kind of anything closer to a synopsis that we can get in terms of theme and structure and uh, what I would like to get you know out of it for all of you. So... But that will be it for today. I hope you guys hang in there. Um, again, you can watch me on my streams uh, tomorrow and Friday on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube on my accounts. Um, we have a demo this weekend for Patreon. Remember, you can check that out right here. Patreon.com slash Studio. Beyond that, that is it. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. And I will catch you all later. Justin, who are we rating this afternoon? We're going to be rating Giggling Geekette. Giggling geek out. All right, make sure I, uh, words. Make sure you give her all the Reaper love, lots of hype. Drop a bunch of uh, emojis in there, all that good business. And I think that's it. So. Yeah, thanks for coming out, guys. Um, don't forget, tomorrow is Thursday, so we'll have an and stream in the morning, and then. We will have, uh, I believe, Sadie show, assuming she, everything's together for her, and then uh, we'll have Reaper live. So tomorrow's a full day, and make sure you guys come on out. Or, you know, metaphorically, come on out. Like, get out to leave your house or anything. You don't even have to put on pants. Right. Thanks, guys. And, Bye, guys. Uh, we'll see you later. See ya.